What happens if someone who has never played Shen before plays Shen for 24 hours? I got a brand new account and I'm gonna see how far I can climb with Shen while also trying to learn as much as I can about the champion. Let's see how I do. But before that, really quick, I want to talk about today's free sponsor, Porofessor. It's an amazing free app that basically just keeps track of all of these little things so you can focus as much as you can on the gameplay. Not to mention the fact that in-game it keeps track of your CS, summoner spells, the enemy team comp, and your team comp so you can have a gameplay going into every game. And it really just helped me focus on Shen as a champion. It's again, a great free app, a lot of information. I would recommend it. I use it pretty much every game. Enjoy the video. My first game I got placed support because I thought during my placements I was guaranteed my primary role so I didn't think my secondary role mattered. Luckily for me it actually turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Uh. But despite getting off to a pretty good start my Caitlyn had some lag issues all game and eventually just disconnected altogether. What's happening? She's just disconnected? Yikes, not a great first game. <laughs> After that game, I was placed in gold four with zero LP, and even though I was just one game into my challenge, I was already kind of tilted. Then I had to dodge my next game because my jungler banned my mid laner's champion, so they locked in mid Yumi. So for my real second game, I actually got top, and this is where I learned a few lessons about Shen. You see, normally what you want to do with Shen is put your Q behind the enemy before the minions even get to the lane, so that way you can get some good poke in when they try to CS. This game also reminded me how bad my map awareness was and why I started playing Shen in the first place. Holy shit, I wasn't paying attention to the minimap, that was my fault. And after a bit of a rough start in my first game, I managed to win my second game pretty handily. And somehow on just my third game with Shen, I had one of the best games of this whole challenge. Is he dead? Please! Yes, got him! Oh, -ho! get wrecked, I got two of you! Unfortunately, I ended up losing this game because my Jin walked into the enemy team and died. And even though that game made me feel like I had already mastered Shen, I would soon find out there was still a lot to learn. For example, another mistake I made in the first few hours was not timing my ults correctly. Basically, in game 5, I ulted bot two times to help set up some kills, and even though it led to some one fights in the bot lane, I had a bit of a problem. You see, when I got back to top lane after that second ult, I was two levels down and Yon had taken three plates. So even though I felt strong because my score was 2, 1, and 3, the Yone was strong enough to just kill me and it wasn't even close. And the early hours got even worse after I had my first really bad game. Luckily for me, the Riot God smiled upon me in my next game. Sure, I got autofill jungle, but my whole team smashed their lanes and we won 32 to 6. But funnily enough, that jungle Shen game actually sparked a bit of a win streak. I didn't do anything particularly well in this game, but I definitely played my role. I helped engage fights and save lives with my ult, I could feel my laning phase getting better, and I was starting to feel pretty optimistic for the rest of the challenge. Until my next game with my support Nautilus. Basically, there was a fight in the bot lane where we didn't focus correctly as a team, and we got no kills. After that, my bot lane and I argued for a bit, and Nautilus basically quit the game. But he made sure to not just go AFK, so we couldn't get a loss mitigated or actually report him. That Nautilus game sent me into a bit of a purgatory during the next several games of this challenge. My next eight games went loss win, loss win, loss win, win loss. It didn't help that in pretty much every single one of these games, I was playing pretty well. I just felt like I had no control over any of these games. I would win games that were so one-sided it didn't even matter what I did, or I'd play my heart out and still lose the game anyway. Fuck. The main thing that kept me from getting too upset was the fact that I was starting to get good with my ults. They weren't all good, but they were starting to get more consistent and my map awareness was definitely starting to improve. And my laning phase was getting noticeably better too. This Nasus kill is actually where I accidentally learned a cool Shen mechanic. The idea is you press Q, and right before your sword gets to you, you flash in front of your opponent so they can't react, and then you get some extra damage and a nice slow on your Q. Anyway, these games were still extremely frustrating. I don't know about you, but spending a whole day to go essentially nowhere is more tilting than losing like three games in a row and just getting off for the day. But despite everything that I had gone through already, nothing could have prepared me for my next game. This guy has 3.6 million mastery points on Garen. My goodness. 
That's all I gotta say. <laughs> so, instead of fighting this Garen master, I just decided to ult around the map and help other lanes when I had the chance. Basically, the enemy team had a Master Yi and a Jinx, both of which can hyper carry if they get too far ahead. So my idea was I would rather let Garen get gold by split pushing than letting the other two get fed, so I tried to help my teammates whenever I had the opportunity. This was one of those situations where ulting, even if my lane was in a bad spot, was actually a good thing because gold isn't equal in all champions. Sometimes it's just more worth it to get your carry fed or keep the enemy carry from getting fed. And it turned out to be the right play because even though the enemy Garen was way ahead of me, the rest of my team was far enough ahead to just win team fights. And it was kind of fitting how my team was able to just win while Garen tried to split push on his own at the end of the game. And in less than 10 hours, I was already gold won. To be fair, since this account was new, I was gaining more LP per victory than I lost per defeat, so even though my record was only 10 and 9, I had climbed a lot. And as a reward for hitting gold one, I was auto-filled jungle again. But once again, my team was amazing and they just carried me to another victory. Unfortunately, after just one game in the jungle, I guess I became rusty at top lane or something because I just died to Trindamir level three like an idiot. Then he dove me and I knew this game was gonna be trouble. Dude, there's no way. Eventually, Trinomir just got so strong that even with help, we weren't able to kill him. So yeah, I solo lost us this game. And this started a massive losing streak where I lost four games in a row. And as quickly as I had hit gold one, I had already demoted back down to gold two. And my last game before the 12 hour mark was one of the most heartbreaking games I've had in a long time. The game started with my jungler and I absolutely destroying this Teemo is up though, which is a problem. Followed by an insane ult bot that won us a fight and brought us back into the game. And for the next 15 minutes, I did everything I could to carry these fights, but no matter what I did, it just wasn't enough. It definitely didn't help that the enemy team already had Mountain Soul at this point, making them even harder to kill. In the end, we just got absolutely rolled in the final team fight. It's hard to point out just one thing that went wrong this game. It just felt like for every good play we made, they just made a better one. Fuck, man! After looking at my stats on Poor Professor and watching the replays of some of my more frustrating games, I learned three things. First, my stats for Top Shen are actually kind of insane. Unfortunately, my win rate with Top Shen is only 43%, so there's something else that I'm doing wrong. Second, I just need to play more for my team. Shen can't really carry games on his own super well, so even if I'm winning or my lane is in a good spot, it's usually worth it more to mess up my lane to save another. And third, just getting better with my ult. There are three common mistakes Shen players usually make with their ult. The first one is ulting into a losing fight, where even if you get there, you're just gonna die. The second is ulting when your lane is in a bad spot. Yes, this is sometimes worth it, but other times you'll fall so far behind, you're just useless the rest of the game. And three is just not ulting in certain situations because you're saving it for a better fight later, maybe. I also watched Expetu's The Art of Shen video to try to understand the mindset of one of the best Shens in the world. I watched him play aggressive in lane with Shen's strong early game, listened to his thought process as to why he ulted to some fights and not others, and watched him utilize things like his W and passive in fights to minimize damage for himself and his teammates. And little did I know, I was going to need all of this information for the second half of this challenge if I wanted to hit plat. My very first game after my little study session was absolutely crazy. It started off pretty well. Oh, she's dead. And it got even better from there. But things started to go really downhill after a dragon fight where the already fed Lux and Fiora got three more kills and things continued to snowball out of control from there. But with our backs against the wall, we won a massive team fight out of nowhere. And with that momentum, we got Baron, and a few minutes later, we won another fight in the mid lane. And with that, we literally just pushed and won the game. Um, let's not talk about my horribly timed E here, by the way. But it makes sense after such a crazy comeback win for my next game to just crash back down to Earth. 
Lucky for me, in my next game, I got super fed. Give me the quadro. Unlucky for me, my Tristana didn't think I could carry, but my new best friend Blitzcrank did, so I had to make him proud. And I think it's safe to say, I did. Fast forward to the next game and we were down 6 to 17. And even though the game seemed doomed and my team already tried to surrender, we were starting to make a bit of a comeback. And hey, even though it looks like the Graves is carrying us here, I would just like to say I was the MVP of this game according to OP.GG, so give me some credit. But yeah, the enemy team kind of just surrendered after that fight. Sadly, the next game did not go very well. We lost the first game in 15 minutes, and my next game had an issue with the recording, but I lost that game too. And my third game didn't start off great either. We started off 2-7, to seven, but my improved map awareness was really starting to come together in these games, and I was able to turn a potential disaster into multiple kills for the bot lane. All I have to say is my ults and map awareness were on point this game, and a few minutes later I ulted bot and turned around another potentially disastrous fight. Oh, we go crazy. This is something I haven't talked about enough, but Shen's ult isn't just to save people. It's actually also used to start fights sometimes by giving people the confidence to engage with an extra shield and a teammate by their side. This is a concept I've been working on this whole challenge, and for some reason in this game it finally just clicked for me. And with the help of my ults and Hecarim's balls of steel, we were able to destroy them in the final fight. 13, 1, and 19, fuckers. End the game. And with my suddenly newfound abilities, I was able to absolutely steamroll my next game, and my next game, and my next game. And after about 17 hours and my 34th game, I was finally plat. Holy crap, I didn't realize you just said plat. I was, I didn't even, I wasn't even recording the moment. I, I stopped recording. Well, good shit. Now I was just curious to see how much further I could go. After I hit plat, I went to sleep, and the next day, I finally decided to stream the challenge for you all to watch. You see, I wasn't sure how this 24-hour challenge was gonna go, and since I was kinda nervous, I started the challenge in secret. But after 17 hours and finally hitting plat, I realized how much fun the challenge was, and realized it's something you all would probably like to watch, so for the last 7 hours, I was gonna do this live. Also, shameless plug, but I stream these challenges live on Twitch and YouTube if you're interested, especially after the new season starts. Anyway, I got on the next day pretty nervous, but also pretty excited to finally stream this challenge to you all. And, um, yeah, if you include my games from yesterday, I went on an 11 game win streak. I literally had to zoom out in my browser to get a screenshot of the whole win streak on op.gg, and I have to say it was one heck of a way to come back to streaming. And I wasn't just getting carried either, I was actually playing pretty well. Please kill! Oh, I'm alive! Uh, she's dead too. Nice! There were games where I made the enemy jungler want to quit. She's dead. Cool. We'll take it. Games where I didn't die a single time. And games where I lost early but had great ults that brought me back into the game. There were definitely some embarrassing moments too, though. No! Fuck! I'm awful! Honestly, while I was playing these games, I was really starting to feel more confident on Shen. I was starting to get really good at laning, was getting way smarter with my ults, and getting better at turning my early leads into wins. But sadly, it all had to come to an end eventually. It didn't help that my Karthus admitted to giving up and trolling the game so we wouldn't win. For reference, this is the play that made him start trolling. I was already smashing Yone in lane, so there was no reason to take this fight and for me to waste my ult. Oh my gosh, why are you running away? No way, dude! Okay, he's dead. But Karthus didn't see it that way. After this, the Karthus kinda just typed the whole game and it led to us losing. And to make matters worse, I got destroyed level 3 in my next game. Because of that bad early game, I decided to play around my team a lot more this game, and honestly, I think I played pretty well considering I got absolutely bodied at level 3. 
And after this game, something awesome happened. The fact that this Masters player added me after the game to ask what my main rank was and then called me good was so validating and made me realize I was actually getting good at Chen. Unfortunately, this ego boost made me want to play another game. But it was already 1am, so this was not gonna be good. It started off pretty well, but after about 11 minutes, I made a terrible ult mid trying to save my Vladimir, and because of that, Set took my entire tower and got 5 plates. Needless to say, I was not happy about this. I was way too tired to queue up for this last game, and my mental boom kinda proved that. This was definitely the most embarrassing game of the whole challenge. The next day, I was ready for the final hours of the challenge, and it did not start off very well either. Uh, he's, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. What the fuck? Where did he go? I was so tilted that this Graves left me in that first fight that I forced another fight, played it terribly, and immediately died again. Fuck me! Needless to say, we lost this game pretty hard. Luckily for me, everyone lost lane, so the game was over in about 20 minutes, so I was able to just hop into a new game. Luckily, I bounced back in my next game. My next game, I personally did pretty well, but after one really bad team fight, we just lost the game. This was one of those ults where as soon as I used it, I was praying it would get canceled somehow. Um, do we win this fight though? The answer is definitely not. And with that devastating loss, we were down to our final game of the challenge. But the final game of this challenge was an absolute banger. It started off with a huge mechanical misplay. No way! Oh my god! But luckily the enemy team made an even worse play, which brought me back into the game. Uh, they're both dead, right? Okay. Then there was a super close 2v2 in the top lane. I definitely overstayed here and didn't respect Silas's damage, but luckily my Maokai was able to clean up the kill. Eventually. Oh, you're insane! But the game started to fall apart when my bot lane got caught out and I tried to save them even though the fight was already doomed. And then literally exactly the same play happened about four minutes later. Oh my god, man! Eventually, the game came down to a huge dragon fight that started off terribly with Aphelios dying immediately. Fuck, I take my eyes off of it for one second! But lucky for me, the Orianna and Maokai absolutely smurfed this fight and we managed to win. I mean, look at how Maokai stopped Lee Sin's Q with his Q. What a fucking hero! And a little after that, we won one more fight and won the game. So after 24 hours, I ended up going to Plat 2 with 92 LP, which was way better than I thought I was going to do. And in terms of stats, I did pretty well compared to Shen's even in Diamond. My win rate was 58.3%. My KDA was almost five, and I ended up being the 326th best Shen in NA. I just think that's cool. Do with that information what you will. Well, that's the challenge. If you wanna see more videos like this, you can click the one that's covering my face right now, and you can also watch me stream these live on Twitch and YouTube.